Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to talk to you this morning about why a sustainable tax model is key to your reputation, a, a subject that probably wasn't on your agenda 10 years ago. And you might ask, why is it on the agenda now? I think five years ago, many of you may not have known who your corporate tax advisor was by name. But we've seen over the last while that uh, you know, tax has become a significant reputational risk if you get it wrong. And if I can pick just one survey uh, from our uh, annual CEO survey, global survey, covering almost 1,400 CEOs in 68 countries, including Ireland, uh, 17th year. And we asked CEOs around the globe, uh, is being seen to pay your fair share of tax important to you? And 75% of CEOs agreed or strongly agreed with that statement. Now, there are regional variances. That figure was about 50% in the US. It was about 89% in Latin America. But there's a clear sign that tax has moved way up the reputational agenda. And the answer for that is pretty clear at one level. Uh, we've seen uh, Occupy Wall Street, US senatorial hearings, the Public Accounts Committee in the UK, various demonstrations around specific taxpayers and their activities, uh, some uh, protests in various European countries like France and Spain and Italy. And that's fine at a very superficial level. But why now? Why is tax moving up the agenda now? And I believe there are three reasons for this. One is austerity. And every country is running in the Eurozone is running deficits in, a, in excess of the 3% uh, permitted limits. And in seeking to raise incremental taxes, companies have gone to individuals in the first instance. A PwC survey has shown that in most European countries, VAT and excise taxes are the first port of call, and income taxes are the second port of call. And individuals see that companies are not paying incremental taxes. And there's a reason behind that. OECD studies show that if you're trying to damage an economy, raising corporation tax is one way to damage it. So governments have sought to leave companies a little bit alone from this tax raising. The second reason I believe tax is on the agenda is the growth of intellectual property in the supply chain. Whether it's advanced technology, a software, an algorithm, a brand, more and more profit is being attributed to intellectual property. And that asset is portable, and that asset can be moved to low-tax jurisdictions, and that's what's happening. And citizens don't like that. I think the third reason tax is for, uh, front of the agenda these days is the digital economy. I think for those of us, I was going to say records, but for those of us old enough to remember buying CDs or books, more often than not, they were, holds, uh, they were published or, or pressed in Germany, they were wholesaled in the United Kingdom, and they were sold in the high street in Ireland. And three different countries picked up tax in that model. You or your kids now go online, and with a single click or two, can download a book or a song. And when you look at your receipt, the company supplying you that book or song is probably located in a, low, in a tax jurisdiction that has a very low VAT rate. I'd say there's a 99% chance it's in Luxembourg. And that disintermediarization, that cutting out of the middle countries, and the loss of uh, tax revenue to those exchequers, is clearly causing uh, a, a difficulty in those countries and causing people to ask, what's going on here? And in some ways, what we see is a 21st century business model colliding with uh, a tax regime that was developed substantially halfway through the last century. And you're seeing the fault lines beginning to emerge in that. If you had a mail order business 20 years ago and you were selling into another country, provided you didn't have a sales force in that other country, you didn't pay tax there. But your ability to penetrate the market through a mail order business was very limited. Nowadays, being able to sell digitally from a single point, uh, you don't need a sales force and you can get massive market penetration. So there are philosophical issues arising there. Is that correct? But those latter two issues, that, that conflict of 20th century tax regimes and 21st century business models is causing a lot of public disquiet. Is it fair that companies can sell billions into a market and yet not pay any tax in that market? And I think this really leads to four questions which you as CEOs and senior executives need to be asking yourself because as we go forward, the threats to your tax reputation, whether founded or ill-founded, will require you to be more transparent 
in, with all your stakeholders. And the four questions you as CEOs really need to ask yourself is, first of all, does your company have an articulated tax strategy that has been discussed at board level? Is everybody in the C-suite and the board exactly aligned as to how you structure and approach your tax affairs? The second one's a much more basic question. When was the last time you checked the tax compliance systems in your organization? Revenue are out there quite a lot at the moment, and the last thing you want to do is to be seen published in a tax defaulters list. And sometimes it's the small things that trip you up. It's somebody being paid gross, uh, when they shouldn't be, some small expense, when you multiply it by the number of people and the number of weeks it's going on, it turns out to be a big figure. You've got to ensure your organization is compliant. The third question, are your tax structures explainable, linked with your business activities, and appropriate to your tax strategy? In other words, when you look at the uh, variety of things which you're doing, are they, do they all fit the bill there? And the most important one, I think the one which is going to dominate the rest of this decade, do you have a storyboard in place to ex explain your tax strategy? And someone in the organization who can articulate this in the public domain if the needs arise. I think that's the most important one because as the public debate on tax has emerged in the last couple of years, there has been a marked reluctance for companies to engage publicly in that debate. Uh, we're viewing a lot of companies' efforts through the prism of them being brought before uh, various senatorial he hearings or parliamentary hearings. And I believe that it, this is going to have to change in the coming years because transparency is a concept, and the Taoiseach mentioned it earlier, transparency is on the rise and it's not going to go away anytime soon. And right now what tra transparency means is when you're dealing with your local inspector of taxes, there's full openness between you and the inspector as to what you're doing. The OECD has some proposals out there at the moment called country-by-country country reporting, which effectively will extend transparency to an inspector in another country will be able to see your global operations, where your sales are in every country and where your profits are in every country. So transparency will go from a very much a segmented country-by-country country basis where you're just dealing with your local inspector to a situation where each revenue authority you deal with will have full visibility of your global affairs. And I actually believe by the end of this decade that in the course of the financial reporting that your companies do, there will be some mechanism where you will be forced, and I use the word probably pejoratively, but you will have to engage with your stakeholders and your shareholders to explain your tax strategy. And I actually believe that's a good thing, because right now, as I mentioned earlier, with the collision of 20th century uh, tax regimes and 21st century business models, there is a, a debate going on at the moment about how the tax system should look over the next 20 or 30 years. Right now, for example, companies pay tax where their functions, activities are, where their sales are made, where their sales are concluded. There's a suggestion now in the public debate, debate that the OECD is carrying on through its BEPS program is, well, should you be paying some profit where your customers are located? Now, that would have significant impact for you as a company, but it also would have significant impact for Ireland as a country. But unless companies are willing to engage in uh, debate, in open debate about their own tax strategies, it's very difficult for them to enter the public debate about how the global tax landscape should look and evolve over the next five or ten years. And believe me, the tax system which will emerge over the next three years will serve us over the next 20 or 30 years and for all of our professional lifetime here. So it's very, very important that companies like yours are willing to actively engage in that debate. But it's not just uh, sustainable tax models for companies, it's actually about sustainable and transparent tax models for countries as well. And last uh, budget day in October, in, in a move that didn't get too much publicity at the same time as the Minister, Minister Noonan stood up to deliver his budget speech, the Department of Finance issued this document, Ireland's International Tax Strategy, 14-page document, and I'd really encourage you to read it to find out what are the principles and the pillars on which Ireland stands in determining its national tax strategy. And the words transparency come up quite a bit in this. These are the five pillars Ireland is committed to in its tax strategy. To maintain an open, transparent, stable, and competitive corporate tax regime. Open and transparent. 
The second one, exchange of tax information. The third one, automatic exchange of tax information. Uh, active collaboration with the OECD on the evolution of the new tax system and engaging with developing countries. These are the pillars by which Ireland's tax regime is going to be going forward. And again, the parallels between companies and countries here is stark. If you're a country and you're doing tax deals behind closed doors, where you're giving different companies different tax answers depending on who they are or where they locate or what they are, those days are going away. And any countries that do give out ruling systems, realistically, that sort of a regime isn't going to be in place much longer if the OECD and the G8 and the G20 have their way. And Ireland's setting out their stall very clearly. That's not the way Ireland is going. And this will mean that some, regi some of the Irish regime will have to change. And not just the parts that are unique to Ireland, like, for example, the double Irish structure, but because the global landscape is, is changing and the global mechanism for tax are changing, some of these ta uh, pr uh, principles, for example, should you pay tax in some cases where your customers are, will have a fairly major impact for us. But it's good to see, and I believe, I strongly believe it's the way to go, Ireland is setting its stall out saying we're open, we're transparent, we're, uh, we do what it says in the tin, 12.5% tax, a very open regime, and without fear or favour, the tax regime will apply to whatever company you are. This is the way forward. And I believe that principle of sustainability for Ireland and Ireland's tax model, and that principle of sustainability for you and your companies are the very same. Go back to those four questions. Uh, have you an articulated tax strategy in place that's been discussed at board level? Have you checked your compliance systems lately? Are your tax structures appropriate to your business, explicable and aligned with your tax strategy? And have you a storyboard in place? And much more importantly, have you a person who will go out and articulate that tax strategy if the needs arise? And I would say to, you, to some of you, the company is not, not to wait until the need arises but actually to proactively go out there and start setting the public debate. For too long, companies have taken criticism, much of it unfair, around their tax policies and their tax strategies. It's now time for companies to become much more transparent and to go out and to battle that debate. Thank you very much.